Hey guys, with the Vaping Handyman coming at you. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a video on how to work on a Briggs and Stratton generator. This model happens to be the 1650, and uh, it's not wanting to run on its own. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is testing it, find out what's going on with it. Then it'll be removal of the carburetor, overhauling the carburetor, and reinstalling it and getting it going. So yeah, that's what the plan is today. I want to give you enough knowledge to feel comfortable doing it on your own, or just teach you a little bit about doing it in general. So yeah, today I am on the AL85 with the Dead Rabbit, and the juice I'm using happens to be aqua my favorite kind pure so it happens to be uh strawberry apple and watermelon so yeah so uh i'm gonna be doing a little bit of this and uh a little bit of this so catch you down there all right and we're back all right so we are about to remove the air filter air filter cover and the assembly to get to the carburetor which is behind here so you're going to start by removing these two screws. They are either flathead or 5 16 So I'm just going to remove these guys. Get this out of our way. So when you're, when you're working on a carburetor, or any machine for that matter, you want to make sure that you keep track of your nuts, your bolts, all the pieces. Because I've made the mistake of losing them and... Uh, now I have a couple machines that need parts, so I'm going to start off by removing this. All right. So we got the cover, got the air filter. It's, uh, it's not the greatest shape. You can see where the discoloration is from the old gas, but uh, other than that, it's not too bad, so that might be reusable. Might just have to use that. Um, the air blower to clean that out more. So set these guys aside. Alright, now before we go any further, one of the most important things I forgot was I'm going to come over here and remove the spark plug wire. You don't need any accidental misfires or anything. Alright, that's done. Alright, so then we're going to come over here and remove these two nuts. These are going to be a 10 millimeter. Of these guys. This is what holds the air filter housing onto the carburetor itself. All right. All right. Once you take those out, remember, put them somewhere where you're not going to lose them. But before you pull this housing off, take your choke switch your throttle switch off you want to put it all the way to the right and wiggle it until it comes off I'll show you why in a second see it has this little notch on there and the notch has to fit through that little slot up there on the top as you see the air intake on here also needs to be off of that all right and there's your carburetor now you're gonna have these the bar and the spring which is what controls your throttle while your machine is running you want to take those off too so I go in here with this little pair of needle nose kind of work that off and then this has a little latch, little arm latch. And slide that off, take that and set it aside. All right. Now the carburetor, the last thing is going to be the fuel line right here. You have to take that off as well. So a pair of pliers, wiggle that up. And 
before you take that fuel line off completely, make sure that your fuel is cut off. So to the right, it's cut off. And you got to take these guys off. Now these are star bits. So you want to use an E5 female star adapter. Take that off. It's like a socket with the inside of the star shape. Or you can use what I'm using as long as you're careful with it. A uh, 532nd socket, which has, of course, the familiar hexagon shape. All right. Be gentle with it because you don't want to mess up those teeth. Even though it works, doesn't necessarily mean it's the correct tool. It's definitely not the correct tool. You want to use the star bit, but if you don't have access to one, just use that. Okay. Now, continue. Take off the fuel line. Pinch this off so I don't get fuel everywhere. Some of them come out because there's some in the line. So you don't have an environmental disaster. Take the bit, stick it inside there, plug it up. Suck that guy out of your way. Alright, now continue. Take off the mounting bolts for your carburetor. And two. Sometimes wiggling it will get the tension off of it enough to unscrew it. Alright. Now we have that off. Okay. So the next step is going to be disassembling the carburetor. You want to make sure it's as clean as possible, of course. But you have these little jets, these little areas that you want to make sure you clean out. And one of the things I use for that, you can either use some type of wire, untwist it a little bit so you can actually get inside there, ream the hole out a little bit and clean it. Next step, going to be removing these two screws which hold the bowl onto the carburetor and you're going to need either a flathead or a phillips i'm going to use a phillips just so i don't have any strippage going on Move this stuff out of the way because this still has gasoline in it <clears throat> all right now let's remove it with the screws Got that loose. Go to the other side. Okay. To get these screws out, set them to the side so you don't lose them. It's going to be uh, for all the screws and bolts. So those two are what holds on the bowl. So carefully drop it down. Because inside you're going to have your float and your other mechanisms that work your carburetor. All right, next, you want to wipe your hands with the rag <laughs> and hold it upside down here and just slowly work off this contraption, All right? Now, one of the things you want to do is go through here. You notice how this is the toilet seat or ring basically it's hollow in the middle and that is your float so when it the gas fills up the chamber it's down like this inside the carburetor when the gas fills up the carburetor bowl it pushes this up now what that does let me show you once i take this out take this pin there's gonna be a little flat mark on there all right Grab it by there, nice and easy. Take that pin out. Set it aside. 
you know, take this off. There you go. Separate it from that. Set that. All right. Now, that is the most important part of your carburetor. This is the pin that closes off the intake of gasoline into your carburetor. You want to inspect that. Make sure that it's not damaged. Make sure it's able to set down in there and plug it up. Because what that does is it sets down inside of here and it plugs up that little tiny little air hole in there. It sets down in there and pushes against that, which stops the flow of gasoline going into it. So you inspect it. Make sure that it's not damaged. Make sure there's no grooves worn into it. So I usually take my rag and or dish towel. Shh, don't tell anybody. All right. Make sure it's clean, doesn't have any hairs or anything crazy on it. Set that aside somewhere where it's gonna be okay. Alright, when you take this wire, it has the one hanging off of it. Get inside there and you want to clean out these holes. Make sure they're free from anything. Could be clogging them up. Same thing on this side. Make sure there's nothing in those little spots. Hmm. Alright. This one looks fairly clean. But I think the problem, as with most things like this, uh, most small engines, is the gasoline that we use contains ethanol. And when you look at the carburetor, you see all these little chambers and tubes and all that while well, the ethanol when it sits in there it actually cakes up the insides of your hole kind of like uh, cholesterol or fatty fatty composites uh, clog up your the inside of your veins making it hard for the blood to flow through same idea with this as far as you want the fuel to flow nice and easy efficiently you know so now I'm going to inspect the carburetor Inspect all the rings, all the rubber gaskets. Apparently, this one, if you can see that, looks like it's a little damaged right there. So, that is going to be an issue. Make sure everything's nice and free. Now, you take off your gasket. Make sure this gasket is in good shape. Generally, when you take this apart, you want to replace these things. Just because when they've sat there for however long, they have the tendency of shaping to everything. And you want to make sure that there's no problems with it. So now you take your wire. You want to make sure that all these little chambers and tubes and everything are free of obstructions. Make sure there's nothing that's uh, blocking it. You see through those. Yeah. See through them. Okay, so those are good. You want to make sure all these little things you go through and just clear them out. So, when you're rebuilding the carburetor, when you get your carburetor kit, it comes with new gaskets, new pin, all that stuff. But as of right now, this is a fairly, uh, this, this machine hasn't been used that much. So, um, I'm just going to inspect it. If everything looks good, I'm just going to put it back together because I don't happen to have a carburetor rebuild kit. So now, make sure you line everything up properly. Put it all back on there nice and neat. All right. Make sure that your gasket is in the middle of that because that's how you make the proper seal. If it's hanging off the edge, it's not gonna seal right. All right, so that's good. All right. 
Now, let's rebuild this guy. This guy cleaned up. What you're gonna wanna do is take your needle. You wanna put it, see how it's got that little thing inside of there? I'm gonna set it inside. So that way it's still free, but it's held. And you take this and you drop it down so your pin goes in that hole. Okay. You take your pin. Make sure you take that little flat side, part with the flat side on there. That's going to be where you hold it by. And you put it back inside of there. Make sure that it goes through that little spot. All right. So now, see, that's what you want to do. So I'm going to clean this off a little bit because I don't need any of that crap going floating around inside the carburetor. It's actually probably not good to use because it has little fibers and hairs. Okay, so that's basically what you want to do. Now, see that little spot that's hanging down? You want that to go inside of that hole right there. Just make sure you line it up properly because that is where your fuel is going to come in from. Alright, that's what it's going to look like. Make sure you can see that seal all the way around. And take your bowl to set it back on there. Alright, Make sure it's fairly even all the way around, and then you're going to reinstall the screws that you took out. Now it's important to remember that when you have rubber gaskets like that, that you want to make sure that the bowl goes down as evenly as possible. So if you have to, just go, you know, you don't have to go real fast. You don't want to crank it all the way down on one side. Make it, you know, tight and then back up just a little. Make sure you do the same on this side. And now you can actually tighten it down a little more. What I like to do, it takes a little bit more time, but I'll go back and forth to each one a couple times. Make sure that they're both going down with similar, um, similar torque. All right. A little bit more, a little bit more, back and forth. So you want a nice firm seal so you don't have any leakage. Okay, then you tighten down a little more. At this point, I'm actually going to use a flathead because I think with how deep these are, it's going to be all right and it won't strip. Okay. All right, there we go. Get your carburetor cleaned, ready to go. Now, before you put it back on, inspect, expect, inspect this area. You have a gasket here. You want to make sure that gasket's in good condition. Then you have a plastic piece that actually separates the carburetor from the block. All right, it looks like it's in good condition. So now, I'm going to reinstall the carburetor. They have tools where you can actually uh, put it on that line, this line right here, pump air into it, and it'll tell you if you have a good seal. So make sure that that little, that little guy, make sure that that sits in where it needs to go on the back of the carburetor, this little hole right here. So make sure it sits flush on there. And put in your screws. second one. You want to do, I like to do similarly, similar, similarly, where I just do a little tight and go back a little more, a little tighter, a little tighter. Then you go back and you get your 532 socket. Make sure it's in tighten mode. Just 
just uh, make sure it's snug. You don't want to crank down on it because, of course, you don't want to damage the teeth on the stars. But you could still go with some pressure. You want to make sure it's tight against that so you don't have any leaks in between your carburetor and the manifold. Alright, that's back on. Now, back up here. Well, do this first. Make sure you take this guy, this arm, control arm. Make sure it goes back in the hole. Alright, swing this little guy until you hear it click. It snaps onto the arm. Take your, your pliers, bend it up a little, make sure it goes in the hole. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Now, connect your fuel line. Reconnect your fuel line. I've got my screwdriver, socket screwdriver thing in here. back over here install your fuel line get your pliers make sure you get the clamps out of that little lip right there all right now we're going to start putting everything back together Take this guy Bring it back over here, set it back into place, take your nuts, make it, make sure you don't strip it, get it snug, get it snug, take your airline, put it Reinsert it back into this plate. Because that's going to be your air flow. Now, take your control arm for your choke, set it back in there, just kind of swiggle it down into place. There we go. Alright, you got your air filter. Clean it out a bit. Take it. Alright, see these two air channels? You want that to be down, of course, because then that'll be right side up. Wait, before we do that, sorry. Make sure this is tight. that set that back on take your screwdriver or your socket whatever works best I always back it out just a little bit and then tighten it in that way I make sure I'm not cross threading anything same thing here back it out a little Let's screw it in. And actually, to get the proper torque, socket, socket back out. Put your 5 sixteenths. fuel on and you're ready to go. Don't forget to reinstall your spark plug boot. Alright guys, so there you have it. 
nut is how you uh, work on the carburetor for a Briggs & Stratton generator. Um, a lot of Briggs & Stratton have a similar type of carburetor build to them and function generally the same way. Um, of course, I didn't replace parts on it. I just uh, cleaned everything and inspected everything and uh, it seems to be okay. So uh, we're going to give it a little pull, get it to crank up just to ensure that we, uh, that we did the job correctly. So here we go. Brace yourself, watch your ears. Make sure you put it in choke, put the choke on, switch on. Fuel line is on, and you will start. So there you have it. it was successful. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully you uh, found it entertaining and helpful. Um, you know, it's not always easy to work on your own machinery, but a hell of a lot cheaper than taking it to a mechanic. So you know. So I'm going to be doing more videos like this, more instructional how-to kind of videos. Um, the only thing I have left on this guy, I've already done the oil change, I've already done the uh, spark plug, and of course now i got to do the air filter, but I'm going to clean her up and uh, find a nice home for it. So hopefully you guys liked it. It was definitely awesome working with you. And uh, again, this is the Vape and Handyman. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos, so just stay tuned for the next. Take it easy, love life, share a smile with somebody else. Have a good one.